Welcome, welcome back. Okay, so this is tutorial number three of creating a sine wave in Max MSP. So this is a very simple tutorial. We're just creating sine waves. Later on, we'll end up creating some sawtooth, so on, so on, so on, square waves, yada, yada, yada. But we're just learning how to make sound with Max MSP. If you're unfamiliar with Max MSP or this tutorial series, go back to the first episode that's linked down below inside the description. There's also a playlist link in there. And we talk about Max MSP a little bit in the first episode. But to give you a quick rundown, it is a visual programming synthesizer. Uh, it's great, compatible with so many different things, including Ableton uh, with Max for Live. And yeah, so far we have learned how to build a sine wave, we've learned how to gain stage it, and we've learned how to turn it on and off. So you're not missing very much if you're hopping in right here. All, however, I recommend going and checking out the previous tutorials as if this is your first excursion to Max MSP. Knowing the basics is very important in Max MSP. It's very easy to break a patch if you just start throwing objects in there. All right, let's go ahead and learn how to create an envelope for our sine wave using a message object. So before we were using this toggle on off to create our envelope, but that just has an on and off. So we're going to make it a little bit more um, detail oriented now, where we'll actually have an attack ramp, we'll have a sustain, decay, release, all that stuff. So how are we gonna do that? The way that we're gonna do that is we're going to use a message object. So message objects hotkey is M. And then we're going to put a string of numbers in here. That's going to look like absolute nonsense, but I'll go ahead and explain what those are really quick using a comment. So the first number is starting gain, starting value, I should say, which will be translated to gain. The second or the multiple pairs after follow this formula following pairs we use an x got x and a y y y so the first set of numbers the x dot x is gain value the y y y is time elapsed in milliseconds. Yes, this uses milliseconds. Get ready to convert all of your BPMs to milliseconds. I hope you know the code. The values are separated by a single space. So those are all good things to keep in mind. So that means if we create a comment, just to pretend to mock this up, so we want to start at zero, not O, because we want it to start off not on, right? Okay. And then we put a comma. That's the only one that we put a comma in. And then after that, we're going to decide where our gain is. So let's say we want to go to 50%. I'm going to add a space. And let's say I want that to happen in 300 milliseconds. And then I'm going to put another space. And then I want it to go up a little bit higher to 0 0.8. And I want that to happen in another 300 milliseconds. And then I want it to return to zero in the span of 600 milliseconds. So to explain what this is, it looks probably a little crazy. Let's put it in a message box so I can increase the size of it. Nope, I can't, just kidding. Okay, so we just copied it over. So this first number is our starting value. Second number, our second value, third, fourth. And then the milliseconds are the 300, 300, 600. So now if I get rid of this toggle button, I can run this message box into this line. I actually don't want it to run into that line. I want it to run into the right line because as you can see here, this says destination value and this says ramp time. So because this is dealing with ramping and enveloping, we want this to go to the ramp time. So now, I can go ahead and hear what this sounds like. So we have a 432, we have our DAC on, and we have our gain on. So let's click it. There you go. We can make this a little bit more drastic. Let's say we want this to go in 
something like that. And I just click it again. See that it decays slower now because it's decaying over a longer amount of time. Let's change this back to, let's make it 8,000. No, let's make it 800. Okay, so there we go. Now we have our ramp time, but if you, whoops, didn't want to do that. But if you want to make it so that it continuously loops, like if you want this to be a reoccurring note that comes up over and over and over at the exact same interval, we can do something to create a loop. So remember that bang or the button object? Whoops, just B. So if I run this outlet, bang, when line reaches destination to the button outlet, that means every time that this ends, it's going to send a bang to this. So let's try it. Bang. Bang. So if I create another bang up here, you can see what a bang does to a message. It triggers it. Very simple, right? So what we can do is we can actually create a loop where I run the output of this bang here so that whenever I click this, it's going to keep re-triggering that bang every time it finishes the message, restarting the sound. Now we have a recurring note. I'm going to start dragging up this. Cool. Okay. There we go. Let's go ahead and uh, get rid of this bang. And then it stops working, right? Okay. We'll keep the bang. We'll just turn off the easy deck. So, in this tutorial, we learned how to create a bang and to create uh, envelope ramp times using a message. Welcome back. You haven't been gone long. I have been gone probably a little bit longer. So at the end of the video, I said I was going to either add the the message ramp time video to the previous video, and I did some thinking about it, and I decided, you know, I'm just going to make this a little bit longer. So we're going ahead and jump directly into the next part, which is using M2F and the built-in MIDI keyboard uh, interface or object on Maxim SP. We have our frequency number here, right? We're going to learn how to control that with a different thing. So I'm going to make a new object. I'm going to make key slider. Looks familiar, right? Looks like a piano. So what this does is, let's make a print object so I can show you. What this does is this sends out MIDI data. And it does it a couple of different ways. First thing that it does is it sends out a number from this outlet. But as you can see, we have another outlet here. So this outlet is the key value. So the MIDI key number. We can see here it sends out different ones, okay, right? And then we have the second outlet here that sends out velocity. So what velocity is, is how hard the key is being pressed. So like on a piano, you press softly, it plays piano. You press hard, it plays. Same thing with the key slider, but we obviously cannot choose how hard we click down on the mouse. So instead, what it does is it uses the spot that you press down on the key. The lower you press down on the key, let's get rid of this print so you can see just the velocity. The lower I press down on the key, the lower the number is. But if I press up higher, see, the number is higher. Okay, makes sense. So we don't need to worry about velocity because we're already doing our gain here with our ramp and our envelope. So we're only worried about the output key value. So I can't hook this up directly to the number because this is not sending a frequency number. This is sending a MIDI key number. So what we need to do is we need to use an object in between. And that object is called M2F, short for MIDI to frequency. So what this object does is it takes MIDI data inward, specifically MIDI key data, and then outputs a frequency. So now 
you can see as I press the key, it actually changes the frequency. We go to A4, we get 440, so on, so on, so on, so on. If I turn back on my Easy DAC, I can change my frequency with just this. Hey! So eventually we'll learn how to... Please turn off. Uh, eventually we'll learn how to connect this MIDI keyboard or this case slider to a MIDI keyboard so you can actually control it with your MIDI keyboard. We're not going to do that this tutorial. This one's already going to be kind of long, um, over 10 minutes. That's what we're shooting for, but we don't want to go close to that 20 minute mark. So that is the end of this tutorial so far. If you like this, that's awesome. Please subscribe. Please like the video. You can also watch this all done live on twitch.tv slash Nicholas Lindell, uh, same as my YouTube channel. And it should be linked on my YouTube channel as well. I'll double check that. But you can watch this all live on Twitch. Otherwise, you can go to patreon.com slash Nicholas, and you can find all these tutorials on Patreon. You can also find the Max templates that I have built in case you'd rather follow along rather than building your own. You can uh, go on there and download it all and play around with it all of yourself. There's also going to be an additional video on Patreon, not included in this YouTube series, but a part of this series. And that is how to create different types of waves other than a sine wave. So if you're interested in that, go ahead, go check out Patreon, and I will see you all next time. First tutorial down, please let me know what you think down below in the comments. Love to hear it. Um, we're all growing here, and hopefully me building these Max tutorials ends up helping out people out there. So have a great one. See you all next time. Bye.